Hello and welcome to another set of our flip video notes in AP Psychology and specifically in our Abnormal Psychology and Treatment Unit. This set of notes is going to be focusing on somatic symptom disorders and that category in the DSM-5. So make sure you've got your notes ready to go uh, for my students and then for um, down below is linked in my Teachers Pay Teachers that you can find the kind of guided notes that go along. So let's go ahead and get started. So somatic symptom disorder is characterized by physical symptoms that seem to suggest a physical disorder. So I'll point something out to you. The root word here is soma, right? And we learned back in the biological basis unit that a soma is a cell body and that the soma to sensory cortex in our brain is the motor, or I'm sorry, the cortex that controls the senses of our body. So soma means of the body, essentially. But here's the thing, there's no physical cause of the somatic symptom disorder, the physical existing symptoms, or there is evidence to suggest that the symptoms are linked to psychological factors. So what this means is some sort of trauma or stress-induced scenario caused the person's brain to cause a physical symptom. So this psychological disorder manifests itself in physical symptoms. Now, there is a disorder just called somatic symptom disorder, but then there are two kind of subcategories or other disorders. One is conversion disorder and illness anxiety disorder, formerly hypochondriac. Okay, so a lot of people have some familiarity with that. It's now in the DSM-5 called illness anxiety disorder. Two other disorders that I want to bring your attention to are Munchausen syndrome, but then there's also Munchausen syndrome by proxy and Ganser syndrome. These are both of the same category under somatic symptom disorders, but here's the thing. These are what's called factitious disorders or false or feigned or fake disorders. So let's take Munchausen syndrome for instance. This is the intense preoccupation with essentially making oneself mentally or physically ill. Okay, so Munchausen syndrome is where someone will debilitate themselves in a way that makes them either physically, most of the time physically, um, I guess you could also say mentally, but mostly physically impaired in some way. Now, Munchausen syndrome by proxy is where someone does this to someone in proximity to them. So oftentimes you will see this with mothers who make their children ill. An example of this, we're going to go throwback for a second, is in the movie The Sixth Sense. There's the little girl under the bed, you know that scene that scares the bejesus out of everyone? The little girl under the bed, and she has a video, right, of her mom putting bleach, I think it was bleach, yeah, in her soup that made her super ill for a really long time and eventually killed her. That is Munchausen's by proxy. Ganser syndrome being very, very similar, um, but it's essentially faking a physical or mental disorder, not necessarily making yourself impaired in some way. But again, these are factitious. They are faked or false. And a lot of people have trouble with understanding, well, then that's not a disorder. That's lying. Well, here's my question. If a person is going to go so far as to inject feces into their blood in order to make them sick as an example of what someone might do, how can that not be distressful, dysfunctional, incredibly deviant and unjustified? It, of course, is a disorder because there's because it meets those 4Ds and the U. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the 4Ds and the U, please make sure that you go back to the first set of notes on this playlist and in this unit of Abnormal Psychology and Treatment. Um, it is titled Intro to Mental Disorders. You really wanna make sure you check that out. All right, so let's bring it back to somatic symptom disorders with conversion disorder. Um, it's also called functional neurological symptom disorder, and there's unexplained symptoms or deficits affecting voluntary motor or sensory function that suggest a medical condition, but no medical condition exists. 
The onset is usually after a stressful or traumatic event. And some common symptoms, physically or sensory functioning, right? Motor or sensory function include paralysis. That could be paralysis of a right arm or hand. It could be paralysis of the legs or from the waist down, right? Blindness is a big one. Deafness, either completely or in one ear. And difficulty walking or difficulty in motor movement, like throwing a ball, for instance. Many of the symptoms are anatomically impossible, For instance, glove anesthesia is the inability to feel the hand, yet they have sensation in the arm, right? There's nothing that's going to cut off sensation from here down, uh, right? It comes from the spine, so it's got to be that way, um, and that it's not anatomically possible for that to happen. One of the most significant indicators of conversion disorder is labelle indifference, which is beautiful indifference. The person has extreme anxiety in other areas of life, but a lack of concern about what appears to be an incapacitating physical ailment. I mean, that's that's pretty telling of this disorder. Often such symptoms allow the individual to escape from current frustrating or stressful situations and sometimes leads to a secondary gain, such as attention or affection. So another disorder we'll talk about is illness anxiety disorder. And this is the preoccupation with the idea that one has or might have or might get a serious disease or ailment, along with misinterpretation of bodily symptoms or functions. So there's kind of two prongs to this one. It's the fear, the preoccupation and fear, almost like a phobia level fear, that they're going to have or get something but then misinterpretation of things happening in the bodily system that indicate that they do have that one thing that they're preoccupied with. And that one may, one thing shifts. It doesn't have to be just one thing, like a certain type of cancer or brain tumor, right? It, it shifts and can be any or all of those things. So three major characteristics is the physiological arousal, meaning worried, anxious, and often have sleep disturbances surrounding that preoccupation. There's a bodily focus, so there's close monitoring of bodily features and preoccupied with those physical complaints that are linked to this preoccupation. And then behaviors designed to avoid or check for physical illness. So avoids those who have a disease, right? And I'm not going into a hospital where someone may have Ebola or something like that, right? Um, And engages in repeated self-inspection and medical consultation. They will go to multiple, multiple doctors, really no matter what they say, whether they um, have a confirmed diagnosis or maybe more likely to be confirmed or complete rejection. They're going to keep going to multiple doctors. So some explanations for conversion disorder. The conversion episodes are nearly always triggered by a stressful event or an emotional conflict. And we find that Easterners and women of all cultures are more vulnerable. So let me give you an example of this one. Let's say that a high school or college football player, athlete of some sort, has the biggest game of their life coming up. State championship, national championship, lots of recruiters at the game, something like that. So um, let's say it's the starting quarterback, right? Um, In this stressful incident, you could see if someone were to um, not be able to handle it, have paralysis of their throwing arm, right? So it is very much tied to um, the the incidents that's causing them stress. And then illness anxiety disorder. Although the causes are unclear, it's thought that a lot of things have something to do with it, including personality, life experiences, and that maybe there was something that's happened in the past um, that triggers this, and upbringing and inherited traits also may play a role. So that concludes our set of notes on somatic symptom disorder. We've got one more set of notes around disorders, and then we're actually going to start talking about treatment. So be sure that you have subscribed to this YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it so that you can see when I'm uploading new videos and kind of follow along in that playlist. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a great one.